Good morning, distinguished colleagues and attendees. I am honored to be here today at the Computer Applications and Quantitative Methods in Archaeology United Kingdom Conference, CIA UK 2023, to present our work, Ancient History of Indigenous South America, Augmented Reality and Digital Archaeology at the University Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology at Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. Allow me to introduce myself. I am João Vinícius Kezabak, co-founder of Ergani Digital Archaeology and Education Project, holding a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in History from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, and I am currently a master's student in archaeology at the University of Minho in Portugal. I am delighted to present our project that originated during my undergraduate studies, developed while I was still in South America. Continuing from my previous point, this work is part of my undergraduate thesis, guided by Professor Silvia Milik Copé, an archaeologist, full professor at the Department of History of the University and director of the University Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology. It was validated by a committee composed of Professor Adriana Schmidt Dias, full professor at the Department of History of the same university and the current president of the Brazilian Archaeological Society, and the PhD researcher in archaeology, Amanda Daltro de Viveiro Spina, from the University of São Paulo, Brazil, and Leiden University, Netherlands. It is important to highlight that, although completely institutionalized in history, this work was designed to articulate discussions related to both digital archaeology as public archaeology as a whole. After about five years as a fellow at the Archaeological Research Center and an intern at the University Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology, I developed this project based on the museum's intriguing archaeological collection, originating from three main moments of archaeological and anthropological activities. The first, through the actions of Jesuit priests Baldwin Ohambo and Pedro Inácio Schmitz. The second, continued by Pedro Inácio Schmitz and José Proenza Brochado. And the third, originating from the work of professors Arno Kern and Silvia Milik Kopi. It is important to say that most of the collection comes from pre-colonial archaeological contexts from Rio Grande do Sul, excavated by the Archaeological Research Center of the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul since the end of the 1980s. So, unlike our first undergraduate thesis addressed to academic peers, this present work was developed as a way to engage with the general population about the history of the region beyond traditional approaches. Therefore, as the general objective of this communication, we emphasize the need to present relevant theoretical reflections and discussions that contributed to the development and adoption of resources in mobile augmented reality, I mean to bring out the communicative potential of the university's archaeological collection, especially that attributable to the ancient history of indigenous South America. Ancient history? Yes, ancient history of indigenous South America, since we agree with Gamble's criticisms of the concept of prehistory and with Bueno and Neves' ideas that what has conventionally been called Brazilian prehistory is nothing more than the ancient history of indigenous peoples. This theoretical position is important because we do not believe that the presence or absence of written sources should be a distinctive marker to say whether a people has history or not. Furthermore, 
this theoretical position is relevant to the existence in Brazil of what Maria Cristina Bruno called in her PhD thesis the stratigraphy of abandonment, defined by her as a stratigraphy that suffocated and socialized pre-colonial remains as indicators of our cultural memory, responsible for the forgetting of archaeological sources and their confinement to the realm of exiled memories. As a concept, although visualized primarily in the general Brazilian context, it seems to us that the stratigraphy of abandonment is even more significant in our context of origin, Rio Grande do Sul, the southernmost state in Brazil, bordered in its smallest portion by Santa Catarina and the Spanish-speaking countries Uruguay and Argentina. Historically, Rio Grande do Sul was integrated belatedly with the rest of colonial Brazil due to a series of geographical characteristics border disputes between the Spanish and Portuguese crowns and the no presence of various indigenous societies such as the Guarani, Kaingang, Xoclen, Xahua, Minuano, among others. However, after Brazil's independence in the early 19th century, the empire of Brazil began to encourage the immigration of European settlers to the region, initially Germans, pre-German unification, and later Italians, fleeing the severe crisis that Europe underwent in the post-second phase of the first industrial revolution, especially with the aim of repopulation the area and increasingly whitening Brazil's population. The result of this project can be seen from recent demographic data. Rio Grande do Sul is the second whitest state, the first being Santa Catarina, being part of the few districts in the country where this group is demographically predominant. With such characteristics, the stratigraphy of abandonment in this region is even more striking. However, as archaeological research indicates, long before the territory was occupied by families of Italian and German de descent, including mine, the human occupation history in Rio Grande do Sul is much earlier than the 19th century. Its ancient indigenous history begins between 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. As pointed out by Copen collaborators, Bueno and Diaz and Schmitz. With at least three major migratory waves in this vast ancient history, the district shares as expected cultural characteristics with Uruguay to the south, Argentina to the northwest, and migration process specific to the current territory of Brazil, such as the extinction and migration of the Tupi peoples originating from the Amazon forest. Thus, things as Hinferim previously highlighted, regarding the fundamental goal of archaeology, which is to provide people with a better understanding of the human past, we developed this project for a greater understanding of the general public about the long indigenous history with indelible marks on the cultural landscapes of this state. In any case, we took care not to present to the public a homogeneous view of what it means to be indigenous, based on the homogenizing views of the 19th and early 20th centuries, guided by homogeneity in backwardness. Thus, we guided our project through the richness and diversity of these cultures, remarkable in the pre-colonial archaeological record and their broad visualization as products of the region's history. As highlighted, since law number 11645 was enacted in 2008, 
it has become mandatory to study and teach the history and culture of indigenous peoples in all schools in Brazil, a legal norm that further emphasizes the relevance of our work as archaeologists, since Brazilian archaeology is mostly, in chronological terms, indigenous. So, for us, we see the extraversion of archaeological heritage through digital archaeology and mobile augmented reality, a path to the gradual overcoming of dimension, stratigraphy of abandonment, through a purpose for well-informed popularization, as Bun has shown. In summary, in the words of Pereira, the concept of extraversion is linked to actions of communication, socialization, promotion, dissemination, and diffusion. It expresses the desire to enhance the communicative capacity of collections through initiatives that amplify information and archaeological assets for the general population, becoming an essential part of the heritage preservation process. Regarding this, although other publications have adopted similar methodologies related to digital archaeology and 3D technologies, our thesis was the first in the institution to use them for its extraversion to the public. As expected, this rich diversity of peoples and raw materials used may the select only a few archaeological artifacts to be modeled in 3D for the educational material. Thus, we chose six artifacts from different areas of Rio Grande do Sul. They are Guarani pottery, semilunar X, ball stone, half of a boleadora bolas, projectile point, mortar, and taquara pottery. All without exception were modeled with the aid of Blender software, texturized from their own photos worked on Photoshop and exported to my web AR, where additions were made for full interactivity with the public. It was on my web AR that the QR codes were generated, enabling the 3D models to be viewed through augmented reality with a simple link, eliminating the need to download an application. Also, for the valorization of the collection, we included in the ancillary book high-quality photos of the artifacts as well as their respective renderings, also opting for artifacts that are not very intact for possible discussions about the fragmented nature of archaeological heritage. This purpose is presented on this slide. It is available on the QR code next to it and has fortunately already been tested and positively evaluated in an activity developed in partnership with an NGO with children and young people in social vulnerability, the Northeast of the state, the cradle of Italian immigration, a factor that undoubtedly contributed to a better understanding of human history in general and specific terms and the appreciation of archaeology as an important field of study. Thank you for the opportunity to contribute to this academic conference and for your kind attention. 
presented here are my contact details and my bibliography. Thank you.